Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking about how to kill your competition or other things along those lines. So if you have competition, which we all do, maybe you want to be stronger, maybe you want to be better. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCR, windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, have a look around. If it's your first time here at the podcast, it's on YouTube, and it's anywhere podcasts are available if you like to listen. Like, 20 times more people listen than they watch, so you're probably a listener. But either way, have a look around. We've been doing this for well over three years, 160, almost 170 episodes of content for you to watch over, and not all of them are good. <laughs> some, some of them, I may have been a little tired. I uh, know, but go back, watch them all. Hopefully you're binging. We have a new binge master. Uh, so far, we're up to like 151 episodes, I think it was, for this year. That's a lot. Like, that's, like, he was on a large commercial project just listening solid to Nation, so that's super, super awesome. But either way, if you want to be a binge master and you want to learn uh, maybe a thing or two, check it all out. Either way, that's awesome. Um, I want to say some shoutouts because I haven't been doing shoutouts because I'm dumb and I don't know why. But Mark Kladzinski, what's up, man? Kevin Foley, what's going on? Aaron Rudy, of course. Aaron Rudy, we've given him a thousand shoutouts, but what's up, man? And uh, Taylor Mishler, man, what's up? What's up to all of you? Those are just a few of the cool kids, part of the nation. Cool kids certified dudes. Who watch, listen, thumbs up the video, and more importantly, more importantly, they put their uh, orders in through me. Huh? Shameless plug time. But that's how I make my money. So if you guys want to contribute at all, let me put an order in for you, windowcleaner.com. All you need to do is call or even text. Texting is way better uh, with how in and out of uh, phones I am. But uh, the number is 862 862- 312-2026, shoot me a text, be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart, and I'll put it in, um, and we'll go from there. So thank you very, very much to all you guys. But um, we're talking about competition killers today. Are you a competition killer? Are you so far down from first place that it makes you sad? Or are you so far away from everybody else that you're like, no one can touch me? I am the golden god. Either way, competition is one of those things that I've always, always, always said. You have to be friends with them. You have to actively go out there and talk to them. You have to create a positive environment for window cleaners and pressure washers in your area. Because there's a lot of us uh, on the national level level, or even worldwide where... um, Maybe I give a lot of information or one of the other content creators gives a lot of information or you can ask questions. I get questions all day long. That's what I do. People text me, call me, email me, right? But when it comes to competition or people in their area, they're just all of a sudden like, I'm not talking to him. He's going to steal everything. Mm, Not really. Not really. Because there's a lot of benefits to being friends with the competition. So I just want to get that out of the... Uh, wait first I've been given routes like jobs like a company dissolved and gave everything to me just gave it to me because I knew the dude you've heard the story but uh, I've had the opportunity to buy a bunch of companies because they were going out and we were friends and they're like hey man I'm thinking about getting out heck heck yeah tell me I'll uh, I'll buy out and then you're getting favorable prices you're getting their work but more importantly you're hanging out with people who know your your strive. They know your thing, right? It's very important to be friends with your competition, but it's more important to dominate your area. And the reason is, is that if you could only have one number one spot, say on Google in your area, you want to be it. Because whoever calls that spot, which is everybody or almost everybody that's online, right? Whoever calls the number one spot, if they answer the phone and they do the close that I say when you're, hey, okay, thanks. So uh, we looked at the house. Everything looks great. This is all over the bid, uh, over the phone bidding. And they say, um, 
I looked at your house using that virtual, you know, we got all the information for the windows. You're looking at uh, 399 for the windows. That's inside, outside, track sills and frames, the whole kit and caboodle. And we can get you in on Tuesday, the 22nd at between 9 and 10 in the morning. Does that work for you? Guess what? It was in their brain. They're going to end their search. First person on Google, they know. That first one on the Google, man, they're the biggest. They got to be the best. All of a sudden, they're booked. They never even gave you a shot. They never called you. They never looked at your refrigerator magnet. They didn't look at your EDDM that you're doing. They didn't look at anything. They called, they did it, and they're done. That's why you need to be, you need to be the competition for everybody. So it's very, very tough because obviously the first page, first listing on Google is super, super hard. But there are some ways that even you can do to help kind of kill your competition. And in the nicest way possible, kill your competition. But um, there's a couple things that you can do that put you ahead that necessarily aren't necessarily um, hard to do. They're not expensive. It's not like saying, hey, let's reinvent everything and try to get the first page of Google. First page is great, but first listing on Google, man, that's a hard place to get. I don't have any like instant tips for that. But here's some kind of uh, tips to talk about the competition side. And the number one thing with your competition, and there are so many, I bet you 90 plus percent of the people that are listening right now, maybe you included, maybe you not, but they don't know anything about their competition. Well, yeah, they know their name. Uh, I think the guy's name's Ben, right? I think I've seen their trucks, like their logo is like a little house thing. They know that much, but they don't know what they're doing. And that's the biggest thing. If you're trying to chase somebody in a race, you have to see what they're doing. They're in front of you. If they're so far ahead of you and you're supposed to be going on the same trail, you don't know what trail they're taking. You don't know what they're doing, why they're that far ahead, how far ahead they are. You don't know anything. And that's a big thing that people find as uh, kind of... Uh, not as comforting is to follow your competition. Now, I'm not ever, ever saying call your competition and get their prices. Don't do that. It's not a price thing. If you're doing that, you're wrong. Maybe you did that in the beginning. Maybe you're going to do that tomorrow and you're listening. Don't do that because it's not price. It's not price. It's who you are. It's the experience. We've talked about that. Go back, watch other episodes on that. But the big thing is what you want to know is what they're doing really what they're doing. Big thing is what are they doing as far as services? Are they offering window cleaning, pressure washing, gutter cleaning, roof cleaning, house washing? Are they doing the same services you're doing or are they doing something different? Maybe they're a window cleaning and screen repair company. Oh, okay. Screen repair. Do you do screen repair? No. Do you want to? Obviously there's a market if they're advertising for it, but that's what they do. Well, I don't do it. Okay, great. Then never talk about the screen side of things. Stick to the other side. But you know that you're tailoring yourself to what they're doing. There's a big thing that people always think that if you're watching what they're doing, and trust me, I always, always knew more about their company than anybody would ever think. Just because I wanted to know, keep your finger on the pulse kind of thing. But there's two ways of thought. There is the, I want to copy what they're doing and emulate it. And there's the other side is I want to do the opposite of them. And they're both very uh, smart. I'm more of a do opposite or get a different focus because here's the thing. If they're focused, we are the um, seven-day rain guarantee company. Well, I'm not going to really do a seven-day rain guarantee. I'm not going to push it as much because that's their thing. I don't want to be on the same level. I don't want them to look and be like, Ah, uh, this is a chocolate bar. It's just milk chocolate. What's this one? Oh, it's milk chocolate. What bar am I going to pick? Which one looks better, right? It doesn't matter at that point if you're selling the same services. But if somebody says, we are the seven-day rain guarantee company, and that's like their thing, that's their stick, that's their USP, I'm not going to use it at my USP. I'm going to do something completely different. Now, I still have a seven-day guarantee, uh, rain guarantee. Maybe... I change it to a 10-day rain guarantee, right? There is a one-upping thing that uh, is a little annoying, so I try not to do that, but I just wouldn't talk about that. 
What I would talk about more is, you know, maybe my satisfaction guarantee. Or, you know, maybe we are the, you know, most efficient window cleaning company or the best equipment or the whatever your USP is in your area. That's all of a sudden your push. Now, if you're the seven-day rain guarantee company and all of a sudden they're the seven-day rain, step aside. There's no way to muddy the water with the same exact thing. Go a different route. But that's where knowing what they're doing is huge. Knowing what they're doing is as big of anything else that you can do with competition because if you can't see them or you don't know exactly what they're doing, it's just a blur, right? I'll use the example sometimes of uh, window cleaning supplies. Uh, there are a few companies of ours. Uh, obviously, I'm with windowcleaner.com uh, and WCR. And there's a few different window cleaning supply companies. I don't ever talk bad about them. They all probably are great in their own ways. A lot of great people that work in that side of the industry. But on the side of what do we do, it's a little bit more different than anybody else. We focus on customer service. It's the number one thing. It's the reason that you guys have my phone. It's the reason you have my text. It's the reason you have my email. All of that. It's the customer service. We have live chat, real people who own window cleaning companies on live chat. We have the phones run 24 hours a day, real people who own window cleaning companies answer phones. Like that sets us apart. So that's where our focus is. But we have to watch the other guys and say, okay, well, we know that one thing that they may be lacking in, no specific companies uh, I'm mentioning, they may be lacking in the customer service. People want customer service and they want stuff to get mailed out and shipped out ASAP. We ship every single package out daily, unless you're after four o'clock East Coast time because our uh, FedEx and UPS direct uh, loads do not go out anymore after that because we're East Coast. But that's what we do because the other guys don't. So taking what you have and tailoring it to where the stuff that people maybe aren't doing is as important as what they are doing. There's another thing that I um, have seen before in that is people doing too many services. There is a jack of all trades, master of none. You guys have all heard that saying, but I know of people who do window cleaning, pressure washing, lawn care, dog poop removal, painting. They also do mild roof repairs and like they're, um, jack of all trades, right? They're a handyman, if you will. Now, um, there's a few handyman companies in both areas, the area that I had my business in and the area that I'm in now that do all of those things, but they also do like installing a door, changing light bulbs for the elderly and all this other stuff. And there is a play to set yourself apart from them is letting them know and not talking bad about, I don't say, those other guys are jacks of all, man, they're masters of none. They don't know what they're doing. They're up there picking dog poop up. They're not cleaning your window. I'll never say that. But what I will say is our main focus in our company is window cleaning. We are a window cleaning company. All of our services that we do are the core four, right? It's window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, and um, uh, gutter cleaning. Those are our core four, Right? That's what we do. That's what we focus on. That's why we are amazing at it. We do it eight hours a day, every single day. Now, if you took two people apart and you saw Joe's handyman service and you saw Jersey's window cleaning company, fancy name that I can't think of up on the spot, you look at the two of them and you go, well, Joe is doing, he, his website's got painting, but he also has like snow removal and tire rotations, whatever else he's got. But these other guys, these other guys, that's all they do is window cleaning. They're going to be great at it. You know, they're going to be fast, efficient. Their business is professional, right? You could separate yourself by not talking bad about anybody else, but you wouldn't know that that's even a selling point or something to make you unique unless you were watching what they were doing. Seeing what they're doing and then counteracting that with what you are is way better than, you know, saying, hey, you know, um, we also do, you know, everything. Well, okay, now you're, you just brought everybody back down to the level. 
You're not chasing the competition up here. You just brought everybody back down. So it's a big thing that people sometimes have uh, a fear for. But you have to know what they're doing. That's most importantly to follow them. But the second thing is you have to know what they're not doing. Because if somebody's not doing, say, interior window cleaning, which I know there's companies out there that do only exterior, they don't do interior, well, there's a, there's a hole. You could fill the hole. How do you take that and make yourself stand out? We are interior and exterior specialists. We love working on the inside. We are fully insured with a $2 million policy, so you never have to worry about any of your belongings being damaged in any of our cleaning. We love doing insides. We love doing the outsides and inside. However you word that. But you're taking something that's not being done and doing it. Now, that doesn't mean, well, that other guy doesn't do painting. I should do painting. I do window cleaning and painting. Or, you know, something like that. Remember, there has to be a core of services. You have to stay there. You have to stay at that home, right? And now this all is the same with um, commercial stuff. Commercial window cleaners, a lot of like route guys, are only window cleaners. They only do route. So we let them know we do facility maintenance. We do window cleaning and pressure washing, concrete cleaning, overnight pressure washing, which is for a whole nother episode. But... When you go to a route job that you've been doing for a while or a standalone business or something, you say, hey, we do window cleaning, but we also provide once a month service for pressure washing and doing all your concretes, gum popping, drive throughs all that stuff too, if you're interested. Well, now all of a sudden, the other guy's not. He's just a route guy. He shows up, cleans some windows, I'll take my money now, and leaves. You're already better than that. But now you have more services that that particular person wants. And it's still in your wheelhouse. Window cleaning, pressure washing are always in the same wheelhouse. Finding what they're not doing allows you to fill the holes. And filling the holes with yourself allows you to stand apart, stand out, right? And that's the name of the game. We talk all the time about USP, which is a unique selling point, unique selling proposition, however you want to word it. And a lot of people don't have that. Like if I ask you right now, you're, you're listening. It's just you, just you and me. What's up, by the way? I ask you right now, what makes you different than the other guy? Nobody's around. Tell me what makes you different. You, you got it in your head. You said it. If you say it out loud, what makes you different? Why would I choose you over your competition? You say it out loud and you go, oh, that's not... That's not very, well, it's because of me. I'm just such a personable guy. I don't want to talk to you, right? What if I'm a customer that doesn't want to talk? Well, that's not a USP to everybody. So thinking about your unique selling proposition, what makes you better than the other guy? Because here's the thing. We know our companies are the best option. If you don't, you're doing something wrong. Get your head in the game. But for the rest of us, I know for a fact that my window cleaning company was the best window cleaning company there was. I know the experience is going to be amazing. I know that no one matched any of our guarantees or any of our uh, process, the experience, the feel, none of that. We worked very, very hard on getting all of our levels up to a certain degree. I knew. Now, if you know that, it's an easy sell. It's easy to tell somebody what they actually need, not what you're selling, right? Somebody calls me and they go, hey, I'm going up uh, 90 feet. Uh, with a water fed pole, uh, which pole should I get? Easy, destroyer, 100%. Super, super easy, stiffest pole in the world, right? I could say that, and I could tell you exactly what it is, but if you go, hey, uh, my max is gonna be two stories on a house, I'll never go above that, I never want to, and never will, ever. Cool. Uh, is the destroyer still good? No, no, that's too much pole, you don't need that, right? I know then they don't need that. You can know something in the positive or know something in the negative the same. And that's where the big thing is. If you know, you see a little kid running towards the street through a crowd of people and it's a busy highway and they're running and running and running, you will push other people over to stop the kid because you know in your heart that that's the best thing to do. That's where this all comes down to is if you know for a fact that you're the best window cleaner, why? That's how you kill your competition because your competition's not going to know why either. They're going to be going through, maybe somebody found them first. Maybe you didn't answer your phone and they got them. Maybe it's their cousin's friend's brother's sister who heard of them. Maybe it's a referral from them. They probably do great work and they probably have a lot of happy customers. 
but you need to be bigger and better than them. Now, if you're not looking at growing, don't grow. Be stronger than them. Be a stronger company. Think about this. If you and the company next to you, you both do, this guy does $250,000 a year. You do $100,000 a year. But you got your poo together. And you're you're netting $80,000. The other guy may be only netting like $40,000. Right? Look at the two companies now. Gross is for other people. Net is for you. Remember that. People only talk about gross to impress somebody else. They don't talk about gross to impress themselves because they know that uh, the $500,000 I made so far this year is not in my pocket, right? Where's all the money go? Get another episode. Watch some of those ones for uh, uh, bookkeeping side of it. By the way, I'm going to be doing a bunch of podcasts here within the next like month. And one of them I'm on is uh, beer bookkeeping and BS. And uh, bookkeeping is super important. It's a boring subject sometimes, but it's something to definitely watch for. So you got to know what they're doing. You got to know what they're not doing and tailor your company or your focus is on those. Another big thing is you have to be more places. Now, this one is a little bit tricky and I always get people kind of confused on this because it, it doesn't go against things that I say, but it does sound a little confusing. Let me elaborate. I will sponsor softball teams, baseball fields. I will donate to any and every charity that's ever been brought to me. I will uh, put my name on restaurant placemats. I will make sure that, uh, you know, my trucks are as awesome as they can be to be seen. The biggest thing is to be more places than your competition. Let's think about something in a different industry, okay? Most of us aren't in lawn, landscaping uh, and lawn care, but think about a lawn care company in your area. Think about them right now, okay? You see the truck. It is the same logo truck, and you've seen a 1,000 of them. You have seen a 1,000 of those trucks. They're all the same color, same logo. They're everywhere. They're in your neighborhood like six times a week. You've seen them advertised. They're all wearing their shirts. They got the. You've seen them everywhere. When you just thought of a lawn care company, who's the company you thought of? The one you see everywhere. Because subliminally, they're the most professional. They're the best company. They're the best option. They're everywhere, man. They got 30 trucks on the road. I see them all the time. Well, you see them all the time because they're so good at what they do. Everybody wants to hire them. That's where the subliminal comes in. So a big thing where... If you sponsor a Little League team, you will never, ever, most of the time, never, ever make your money back, ever. A Little League team sponsorship is like 200 bucks, 250 bucks, depending on what you're doing and what they need. And what the, it's usually like shirts and pizza party or something, right? If you do that, it's 200 $250. That's a job. If you pick up one job from it, cool. If you don't pick up a job directly from that, it's also cool because... Every parent that's there sees your logo. Every parent that is on the visiting team sees your logo. Now, you're only really advertising to a few people, but guess what? They see your logo there. There's also a banner at the back of the baseball diamond. You're helping out the local baseball diamond anyway, right? By the way, check with your tax people. A lot of the stuff is all deductions. Obviously, you're spending money on uh, sponsorships and things like that. But they see all that. They see all that. They are different sponsorships and a lot of things. All of a sudden, your logo's there. Even if somebody's not looking for it or seeing it, they see it all over. And all of a sudden, it becomes recognizable because they're seeing it everywhere. I'm telling you, I've been on placemats. The only thing I won't really do uh, is golf cards. If you guys have seen those on the back of a scorecard for a golf course, they call all the time. It's awful. But uh, no one even looks at those. By the way. The only thing that you can be in golf is mad because if you're having a great game of golf, you're not even looking at the scorecard. You're experiencing the golf. But if you're mad, you're like, ah, oh, damn, man, I can't believe it. And all of a sudden, they're looking at your logo. It's on the back of a scorecard. No one looks at the back of a scorecard. So I'm telling you, scorecards suck. But everything else, even if you get a great deal on it, maybe. Be everywhere you can be. It all of a sudden boosts you up, and they don't think of your competition. They think of you. 
There's another thing that has been said with uh, vehicles, and uh, it's usually numbering your vehicles. Now, ethnically, or eth not ethnically, <laughs> ethically, so there are people who will number vehicles, okay? I totally understand that because you're like, hey, you're in number three today, you're in number four, but say you only got a truck. If you number your vehicles, start at number four, start at number six, start at a weird number where all of a sudden people may think that there's a lot. People don't read the numbers, right? And you don't have to do that. I never numbered vehicles. We had vehicles where we were, we'd go by a year. So we'd be like, hey, you're in the 18, uh, you're in the uh, 20, that kind of thing where you knew where you were. Uh, and that's the year of the vehicle, not the, the number on the bottom. But people will do that. I had the first realization of this in my company. I was still in the field. It was me and my brother's friend as a helper way back in the beginning. We were like in business for a year, right? He'd come help me every now and then. It was great. And one day we're talking with one of these ladies who was our customer. And she's like, man, things are going good for you guys, huh? I said, yeah, you know, I just really appreciate it. We have a lot of great customers like you, and it's just, it's been a great experience, you know, business in general. She goes, I knew you were doing good, man. I see your cars everywhere. Your trucks are all over the road. And I went, uh, and I realized at that time that the perceived size or perceived knowledge or anything, a customer's perception of your company is from how much they see you. She goes, oh, you guys are doing great. You guys had to be the best window cleaning company in town, I bet. Why? Your trucks are all over. That's perceived. Perceived value, whatever you want to call it. So having that all be out there and being everywhere, seeing, oh, I see you guys all over. I, oh, man, we, I donate to every single uh, nonprofit. Somebody calls me and says, hey, we're doing a fundraiser, silent auction for fill in the blank. I don't even care. I've never said no yet, but I haven't heard of them. Well, we're we're uh, polishing toasters. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't. But would you like to donate to it? Absolutely. I'd like to donate two $200 gift certificates. Is that okay? Two separate $200 gift certificates. That way you can auction them off separate. Double the price on it. Oh, wow. That would be amazing. Yeah, $400 worth of gift certificates. Absolutely. Now, you guys know that uh, our minimum was 149. I know where your minimum is, but think of your average ticket. Your average ticket usually is 250, 299, something like that. $200 is not something to scoff at if you want it or to bid on it. But what it does is now all of a sudden your business cards and your flyers are up at the table. Everybody that's there is walking, oh, hey, that's that window cleaning company. Hey, that's, that's the team. They're the guys that do our little league team, right? All of a sudden pieces start falling into place. You're everywhere. That's a big thing. Again, look it up in the tax things. You can write a lot of that off and you're getting new customers because people are going to buy it. And most of the time, golly, probably 90 plus percent. Of, I can't even remember when somebody bought a gift certificate that was already in my customer. So perfect, right? New customer. They're still going to be usually paying because there's usually a little bit over that on an average ticket. Uh, and if they say, hey, I just want to stay at the $200, absolutely. The $200 will get you 20 windows. Go ahead and pick them out or whatever, however it works. Uh, but the thing is, is that you're getting new customers from it, but you're at another event. The fancier somebody is or the fancier they feel or the more decorated they are or the more accomplished something is connected to, the more they associate that to you. If you had your business cards and flyers up at the Ferrari dealer, people are like, whoa, look at this company, man. Like they're, they got their stuff up at the Ferrari. Like it's a car dealership. It doesn't matter. Like you could have it at the Kia dealer or you could have it at there. You could have it at an oil change place or a Ferrari dealer, but they're instantly associating. So when you go to an event where people are feeling great, they're doing something for a great cause, they're helping somebody and they see your stuff, not only is there instantly a great feeling connected with your company, but there, there you are. You're there, your competition isn't. They go home and watch Little League, there you are, your competition isn't. They go and look at their menu at their local diner, boom, right? It's huge. Be everywhere, I'm telling you, it's going to help you. As much as you possibly can, stay in that one. But what tethers to that, and probably the biggest thing that we already kind of touched on a little bit, is uniformity. Everything that you do needs to look the same, feel the same, have the same experience. Your trucks all need to be wrapped the same way. Your uh, apparel and every uniform everybody wears has to be the exact same. 
even if the shorts are different brands, but at the same time, it has to be a cargo khaki short, right? You have to wear, you cannot wear black shoes. You cannot wear white shoes, whatever it is. Each person has to look the same way, like in a McDonald's. Every truck has to look the same, like the signage in a McDonald's. Every experience has to be the exact same, like a McDonald's. Because the people associate McDonald's with the feeling that they get at McDonald's. No one has ever been to McDonald's and been like, their food is delicious. It was so much better than going to that steakhouse, right? You have to create uniformity because if you do, they see you everywhere. They notice it. All of a sudden, it's familiar. If you can become the familiar, they will know and recognize you. And that is huge. That's how you set yourself apart. Uniformity. Anyway. There you go. I hope you kill the competition. Hopefully you're nice to them too. But listen, I always want to be stronger. It's a little thing inside me. I want to be stronger. I want to be bigger and better than the competition. I just do, right? Maybe that's just me. But either way, I do appreciate it. Like I said, if it's your first time, go watch all of them. There are uh, lots of content to come up on. Hopefully you got a thing or two out of this. My name again is Jersey with windowcleaner.com. I would love nothing more then if you let me put your orders in for you, even if you throw it in your cart, make sure you're logged in, text me and be like, yo, Jersey, it's all in my cart, it's good to go. I pull the trigger for you, I get credit, it costs you absolutely nothing more, and you make my day. So please do do that, I definitely, definitely appreciate it. For the most part, I wanna see all you guys out there killing your competition, be bigger and better, stronger than everybody around you, but more importantly, until next time, go out there and be epic.